Hello everyone and Happy New Year! Today we are chatting about the Scottish New Year tradition of first footing. So how are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and well. I hope you had a lovely New Year wherever you are in the world. Um, it's funny here in Edinburgh and the whole of Scotland right now, we are in tier 4 which is um, it's not quite locked down, but it's it's a lot more strict. We are allowed to go out for exercise and work and things like that. So this is me out for my exercise today. So I thought I would take you guys along and talk at the same time. Um, it's cold here right now. There is snow all around the place, but it's not good snow. It's not nice snow. It's slush, essentially. However, the castle... That looks nice. That looks nice. We're here on Princess Street because I thought if I was going to talk about first footing in New Year, this would seem like the proper place to come because normally I'm filming this on New Year's Eve. Normally, this area here would be getting ready for the most famous New Year's party in the world tonight, normally. But now it's just a street like any other where all the shops are closed. The people are few and far between. But the buses are running. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a shame. But it's, you know, we all know why. And, and like I said, I think in the last video, we'll miss out ne this year. And next year, everything will be twice as big because we'll be making up for lost time. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is normally the site of the biggest New Year party in the world, the, our, our Hogmanay celebrations here in Edinburgh. Um, there have been some online celebrations and I, I'm not even sure if they're doing fireworks tonight at midnight. I don't know, I, I genuinely don't know, but it's, it's a quieter time. I think I should probably start with the New Year here in Edinburgh. Now it kind of just developed. Yes, okay, now it's this big organised party where bands will normally play. I'm like, I can't believe I'm walking down the middle of Princess Street and there's like, I'm on the road, I'm walking in the middle of the road, there's no one here, there's nothing here. But, um, that's a beautiful view there though. I'm getting distracted, I'm not even, I'm not even rabbiting on right now, I'm just getting distracted by everything and there's nothing. I get distracted by nothing now apparently. Um, what was I saying? Yes. So the New Year party and everything has get small, it, it just used to be, and I remember talking to uh, uh, Grant Stott about this on one of the Scottish Memories interviews. I'll leave a link in the corner of that if you want to see it. Are we steaming up? I can't tell. Um, people used to just come out, hang out, generally on the Royal Mile in front of the Tron Kirk and just, you know, just hang out at New Year and go, yeah, Happy New Year, and then, snog a lot of people and then then go away and gradually this grew grew and grew and grew and grew essentially it's what I can tell um, because I'd, I've been to a few Hogmanay parties on the Royal Mile in my time but the first one I went to was the last one before it became a ticketed event and anyone could just come and, and you didn't need to buy a ticket to come to the street there was things on, not as much, but there was things on. You generally just came and the whole place was full of people and you had a countdown to midnight and then you just wished everyone a happy new year. And it was brilliant. And, and, and yes, okay, there was a little bit of music here and there. There was definitely the fireworks, which were spectacular. But the rest of it, there wasn't... The bands are bigger now and all these sort of things. Look at that, look at that. Is that not spectacular? Is that not just incredible? Obviously we are known for our Hogmanay and New Year celebrations and it's kind of thought that a lot of our traditions actually come from the Viking invasions around about the 8th and 9th century or at least they're left over from them and the remnants from them and, and definitely in a lot of Scotland, maybe more northerly than, than here it's still the Yuletide cele celebration as well and, and you know all these things still go on, a celebration of the the winter solstice and the and the, the start of the lighter nights and all these sort of things, you know, it's that it's that sort of celebration uh, out of the old and with the new, that sort of thing, you know, you know what I mean. But um, also, 
going with that, we have to go back to the fact that Scotland didn't celebrate Christmas for like four or five hundred years. If you don't know that story, I'll leave a link in the corner and in the description again as well. Um, because we, we stopped celebrating it because it was banned in Scotland for, for about four or five hundred years. In fact, really didn't celebrate it in Scotland until about the 1950s when it started to build up again. Um, which is beautiful. It's just beautiful, isn't it? But there are a lot of old traditions that still carry on. Again, I'm going to say more uh, either with an older generation or up the north of Scotland, but there was a sense of cleaning the ashes out the fireplace. That always happened on uh, New Year's Eve, on today. You would you would clean the house. You would give it a new, it's almost like a spring cleaning, but it, it's at the end of the year. It was, it's a right out with the old, in with the new. Let's give the house a good cleaning and... and taking the ashes out the fireplace was it sounds like a funny thing but that's a big part of that obviously we don't really have wood burning coal burning fireplaces so much nowadays but that was the thing you know you would clean out you would dust out anything and so that you're ready for the new year a new start a new time to begin and then first footing first footing was is a is, is a funny thing it's not something i ever really did but i know my cousins my older cousins and things like that that's what they did they would go out first footing so first footing or to put it in a more understandable sort of way is first foot in the door in the new year is supposed to be to to bring good fortune to you for the year so the first person the first foot you want in your door is someone tall dark and handsome so if anyone wants me to come round, I'm six foot one, I've got black hair, so two to three ain't bad. And, and, and it would have to be someone tall, dark and handsome that stepped foot in your house for the first time. Because th that would bring you good fortune for the year. And again, I think a lot of this goes back to the inspiration of, of the Viking invasions of the 8th and 9th century as well. If someone was, was walking into your house with long blonde hair, uh, then that wasn't a good thing were the Viking invasions, you know what I mean? That sort of Norse sort of invading, pillaging sort of thing. So you didn't want someone tall and blonde knocking on your door and coming in, you wanted someone tall and dark. It's funny that it's not a redhead, being, and I'm not meaning that in a bad way, because obviously the red hair is, is quite predominant in Scotland, you would think, but no, dark hair. Tall, dark hair, that's what you wanted. And they would have to bring things as well. They wouldn't just be allowed to show up. They, this was to bring good fortune to you. They would have to bring with them a symbolic piece of coal so that you never go cold. A piece of shortbread so you never go hungry. And you know, shortbread. Salt so that your life always has flavour. Black bun. No idea why. No idea why. I don't know why a black bun was in there. If someone knows why a black bun was one of the things you would bring. It may just be the same as a loaf of bread kind of thing. And of course, a wee whiskey. Um, and and this was as time went on, first footing became what you would do at night time because uh, before this, before people would come here, it was house parties. People would have house parties and still do for New Year, not this year, but um, still do have house parties. And where I grew up, it was a big thing. You know, you would you would know where the parties were, and you would go first footing. You would you would nip into all these places and be the first foot in the door of that night um, and just you know whoever was your tallest darkest and most handsome person would have to be the first person in because obviously you'd be in a group probably some people used to just go along the road listening for a party you know it's like oh, any parties uh, they're having a party let's go knock on their door it's rain it's, it's kind of raining and snowy so i'm sorry if, it, if it's getting that sort of way in the camera um so yes yeah, so that would be a big part but the first foot in the door doesn't have to be right after midnight. It can be the next day, it, it, or two days later. It's the first foot in the door. It could be you. You could walk outside your house and then come home and be the first foot back in your house the next day. Um, and I've got a funny story, just to sort of round it off for you. I, I was, well, well I, I, we think it's a funny story in my family because my dad almost died of hypothermia. It's funny, eh? <laughs> um, we, uh, we used to go, my mum and her friends, my mum and dad and their friends used to take turns at hosting New Year every year and I was what I call a lonely child. No 
brothers or sisters and my mum and dad's friends didn't have any children either around about my age or anything like that so it was me and a load of adults and at least at least for new year and I was about 11, 12, 13 you know, not old enough to go out with my friends and have new year I would go around there and I actually remember it being a lot of fun a lot of fun because they would make it fun for me but my auntie really wanted my dad to first foot for the first foot in the house but he was there he was having the party with us so about five minutes to midnight she gave him a piece of coal and a bottle of whiskey and I think a bit of shortbread I can't remember and pushed him outside the front door and locked the door <laughs> I think but he wasn't allowed in till after midnight. So from about five to minute, five to midnight till a couple of minutes after midnight, he's standing outside freezing. They didn't give him a jacket because it all happened quite quickly. They just was chucked outside at five minutes to midnight. And then after midnight, he was allowed back in. So as we all celebrated midnight, we're happy to hear my dad's outside going, oh, oh. and then he was allowed in and first footed the house. That's something that, you know, you know how these funny family stories just sort of stick with you. And that's something that always kind of still, we still laugh about that now. When my Auntie Margaret threw my dad outside the door for New Year. It's a Scottish auntie as well. Anyone Scottish watching these, anyone who's close to your mum and dad, very close friends, they, they naturally become your auntie and uncle. Um, so that was my Auntie Margaret, who was actually two of my mum and dad's best friends. And, and yeah, anyway, there you go. That's, that's just a random story for you all. And yeah, and first footing, it's, it's, it's just something that I'm sure it still happens, just not in the circle that I'm in now, and I definitely think it still happens up north, but it was a big thing, it was a big thing, first footing was a big, big thing. Someone's having fun anyway, at least. Hear the music blaring coming from somewhere. Anyway, from Edinburgh, from Princess Street, where it's normally the biggest party in the world, and now it's just like any other street. I hope you've had a brilliant new year. Welcome to a new year at Clan Brunford. Um, hopefully it's gonna be a good one. But wherever you are, remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye humans.